right. Just for the sake of argument. Let's assume the Muslims are right. If the Muslims are right, then Christ was a liar and a deceiver. Because Christ claimed to be more than a prophet. He claimed to be the Son of God. He claimed to be the Messiah. He claimed to be the resurrection of the life. He claimed to be the only way to salvation. Now, on the other hand, if what Christ claimed is true, then obviously the Muslims are wrong. And so is every other religion. I mean, just the basic fact of logic is the truth cannot contradict itself. The only other logical conclusion would be that everybody's wrong. All religions are wrong. But if Jesus taught to get rid of sin, if he taught that sin would not be the damnation of hell, but if a whore could be left up to heaven, then how in the world can people who have not chosen to follow his way, who have chosen an alternative path, even in your mind a path of sin, Yes. How can they be dead? A whore can be forgiven. That's why we come to this college to tell you whores, whoremongers, you can be forgiven. But you must meet the condition. And that's repentance. You can't. God would be unjust if he were to forgive without repentance. But it doesn't mean repentance to Christ. Yes, it does. And, and acknowledge him as the Savior. Not only have you had to repent. But you have to acknowledge Jesus and His atoning work on the cross as the Savior of mankind. Again, and Jesus said that. He said, I am the way, the truth, the light. No man comes unto the Father but through me. He said, He that believeth not in me is damned. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 5, He that has the Son has light. He that has not the Son has not light. But the wrath of God abides upon him. Let me ask you a question. If men could be saved through some other means than Jesus Christ, why did Jesus willingly lay down his life? It all depends on whether you think he's the anointed or not. But he thought he was the anointed. That's okay. Okay, I'll lay my life down willingly. If he's not the anointed, if he's not the Messiah, if he's not the Savior, then he was a fool. Yeah. Well, not necessarily a fool. He may have been a man of principle. He may have believed he was. Hey, a man. Well, many went to the cross. Many then, men then, went then, to the cross. All right, then either a fool or lunatic. Many men went to the cross for their principles too. Many Jews went to the cross for their principles. Yeah, but he went to the, why did he go to the cross? They yeah. crucified him because he claimed to be the Son of God. And they were accusing him of blasphemy. Now, if he wasn't the Son of God and made that claim, uh, then he was blasphemous. This would be absurd. It would be... Uh, wicked and be blasphemous for anyone to go around making the sort of claims Christ made and not be who he claimed to be. At the end of the world is coming. He's been doctored. Their eternal doctrine to belong to the apocalyptic. The eternal doctrine to belong to the apocalyptic. <coughs> what doctrine? I don't have it. I, I can't recite it. Hey, listen, he wrote the apocalypse. Uh, 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 Apocalypse. In the book the of Revelation. That he belonged to the apocalyptic. Yeah, well, I would like to see that uh, that evidence. Do you think Gandhi went to hell? Well, no question in my mind. <laughs> Gandhi went to hell? Why would he deserve heaven? <laughs> I have no idea. He said, he did not recognize the Savior. Gandhi was uh, a pervert. You need to read the book of the Gandhi. Did. Nobody knows. <laughs> no, not only that, he refused to practice sex within his marriage. At the age of 35, which was <laughs> once you marry, you can't suddenly decide you you're going to be celibate. <laughs> you have an obligation to your wife. And then the pervert would get little <laughs> teenage girls and uh, sleep with them. Test is celibacy. <laughs> but you come to this college, you pass it. Poor mongers, poor. I don't think that that's teaching love and spreading love and, and letting people into what you think is the path to salvation. Uh, I love you enough to warn you. You love us, but you hate us. That's right. You love us enough to warn us, but your warning tends to turn people farther away from the path of Jesus. Most people, that's true. Then what are you doing? Are you? Well, hey, wait a minute. Most people rejected Jesus' message 
Hey, Jesus said, if I had not come and preached unto them, they would have had no sin. But now they have no cloak or excuse for their sin. In other words, he's saying, I came and declared the truth, and they rejected what I thought. He said, now they're worse off than ever. Because our, our guilt is measured according to our life. And if, I, if what I say is true, and I come and give more light to this campus, and you reject it, you're in worse tr trouble than ever. But you're passing light with such conditions that we could never accept it anyway. The only condition is uh, that you love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. But you, by as your definition, as you, as you, as a representative of Jesus, are turning us farther away from Jesus by making you unattainable in our eyes. Well, wait a minute. Jesus said they hated me without a cause. Jesus hated and despised and rejected the man. The apostles themselves were Are you Jewish? Okay, what happened? What did the Jews do to their own prophets? Killed most of them, right? Well, they, they didn't like, know can they you were say, the Well, can you say that? That, uh, that, that they were responsible, therefore, Jesus for turning these people off? Jesus asked the Jews to kill him. He had to die. He had to die. He didn't, ask anyone, to, to he didn't ask anyone to kill him. He, he said, I lay die. my life down willingly. He was, he he was merely die. fulfilling uh, what the prophet said he would do. Like Isaiah, uh, chapter 53. Read that. Isaiah gives a detailed uh, description of the crucifixion. Yes, ma'am. Well, I have a Yes, that's right. There are, in the confirmation of this, Jesus said it will be more tolerable on the day of judgment for Sodom and Gomorrah than it will be Tyre and Sidon. Uh, because he said uh, they, uh, and it will be more tolerable for Nineveh on the day of judgment than other cities where he preached. And he said because they, you know, in, in uh, Nineveh, they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And he said, Behold, a greater than Jonah is here. So yes, there will be. Bible says some will be uh, beaten with few stripes and others with many stripes. And there will be degrees of reward in heaven for that matter. What then what's the possibility what was I going to say? Pass Why have you people rejected Christ, is what I want to know. I was never taught to accept Him, and I still do not accept teaching that I could accept Jesus. Well, that is uh, one factor. Uh, you you know, it uh, is helpful when you are taught the truth. Regrettably, uh, a lot of you probably haven't been taught to believe in Him, taught to accept Him, at least for many... In any sort of rational way. I was taught you might have said, well, you know, you ought to believe in Jesus. But you've not really been taught about his character. You don't really, when it comes right down to it, obviously, most of you don't know much about the life, teachings, or character of Christ. So it is difficult to believe in. Matter of fact, it's somewhat irrational to, to put your trust in someone that you know nothing about. But I would suggest you investigate him. I think... This person who I don't think you can deny that has had a great impact on history, I think there's no man that has had a greater impact. Yeah, most of you, well, how many of you have just read, say, the four Gospels completely through? Okay, quite a, uh, maybe a, a fourth. Well, you, the rest of you have just blindly rejected him. And to think this great teacher, that you, I think most of you are admitting was, perhaps a prophet, uh, and you haven't even bothered to examine his teachings. And yet, I think that's anti-intellectual. But if look, at what else. You, what, look at what we've learned from history, not to mention just the Bible. More people have died in religious wars, and wars concentrating on Jesus and the and the the, the infection of, of Christianity often into the world. People are dying. That's not what Jesus taught. The people who know Jesus, who who preach Jesus, are many times murderers. And if they're not murderers, they're judges, where they have no business being judges. Well, first of all, don't think everything that's been done in the name of Christ that don't necessarily it's mean Christian. that Christ is behind it. Right. But yeah. it makes you suspicious of those who tell you what Christ is. So we're not telling you to follow. Uh, we're, we're telling you what, what makes you suspicious about Christ. Uh, yes, you have uh, hypocritical uh, people who profess to be Christians. Uh, but uh, what fault do you find in Christ? How can we prove that you're not hypocritical? With 
Well, you don't I'm have a, your word. you don't well, have absolute okay. truth. Uh, but then one has to consider. Uh, you know, obviously there's no monetary reward in me coming and preaching to you. <laughs> And uh, certainly there is. And are you certainly, trying to get a level uh, of certainly there is no honor in it because uh, generally uh, I don't get respect, but mockery and ridicule on this campus. So I think if you would rationally conclude, uh, it must be either love or else I'm deluded. However, are you also trying to get into a higher level of heaven? Is that the, the what the carpenter cleared? Are you are you putting money out, not in this life, but for your next life, betting on it? In fact? Uh, no, I'm not. Again, uh, uh, I'm trying to take as many people with me to heaven as I can. I believe in what I say, and my motive, if my motive was merely to get some higher level in heaven, then I would not be a Christian. My motive is to glorify God and to serve you. Because I know how your sins grieve God. And that's what bothers me the most. How your sins grieve God. And how many people have come with you from listening from your travels around the campuses towards the path of God? Well, very few. But when it comes right down to it, of all the people Jesus preached to, few followed him. And the ones that followed ended up denying him in the end. Most of them. How many followed the prophets? How many followed Jeremiah, Isaiah, uh, Ezekiel? Are you Read your own scriptures. Read your own scriptures. God's messengers have always generally been rejected by the masses. You believe. You follow. That's nothing new. Matter of fact, if I had a large following, I think it might give you more reasonable grounds to question my teachings and motives 